Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to the webinar today. Uh, so if you're joining us, um, you know, you probably know something about Julia, the language, but many of you may not have used Julia Hub. Um, so really what I want to show you is a little bit about what Julia Hub is, and then I'm going to talk about the collaboration features um, that is going to be part of the demo today. So, you know, who am I? My name's Deep. I'm the product director in charge of the roadmap for Julia Hub and, uh, you know, the bigger features that are going on there. I put up my email here in case you want to reach out. That's deepdata at juliahub.com. Um, I'm always happy to hear directly from developers and from the community. So if you email me, I will definitely email you back. Um, I want your feedback on Julia Hub and, you know, any ideas, any features that you think would be great for the ecosystem, please do let me know. Uh, I will put my email again up at the end of this presentation and you will get um, this deck so you can reference back to it after this presentation. So the agenda today is pretty straightforward. I'm going to talk a little bit about what Julia Hub is. Then I'll talk about the main collaboration feature called projects. Um, I'll give you, you know, in the next slides, a brief introduction to how that works, as well as team access controls. Then I'm going to show you a demo. Uh, I pre-recorded the demo just so I didn't uh, mess it up. There's a lot going on in it. And then after I show you the demo, we'll come back. I want to briefly mention a traceability feature that we're building, um, and then we'll end with Q&A. So let's jump right in. So overall, you know, Julia Hub is basically your ecosystem for all things Julia, um, from package management to infrastructure, such as the ability to run distributed jobs on, you know, 100 plus nodes, um, both CPU and GPU. Uh, all of this is included in Julia Hub and managed and provisioned by us. Um, and so really we're building this platform as a service so that you can go straight to coding and, and we can manage everything else for you. Uh, to give you kind of a better picture of the features on Julia Hub, um, as I mentioned, you know, we've got infrastructure. Um, additionally, the Julia package manager and the 9,000 plus packages in the open source ecosystem are there. We have the uh, package server. We also have the ability to create your own private registries. So if your company is building, you know, custom Julia packages, they don't want them sort of out there in the world for the open source community. You can store them in a private registry within Julia Hub itself. Um, and you'll see through the projects feature, you can actually permission that registry. So only certain people have access to it. We're also building um, proprietary products. So, you know, we have some award-winning scientists and engineers on the team. Um, one of the big ones that we are building is Julia Sim. There's a bunch of demos and webinars floating around both on juliahub.com as well as on YouTube. So definitely encourage you to check out Julia Sim. It's pretty amazing. Um, I'm not going to show it to you today, but, you know, again, follow up with us and, and we'll, we'll get that to you. So one thing you will see today is some of the applications in Julia Hub, specifically the Julia IDE, which we built into VS Code. Um, but Julia Hub also includes other applications such as Pluto, which is an interactive notebook, as well as third-party apps um, like RStudio, and we have like a Windows and, and Linux workstation as well. Um, and lastly, I'll mention that Julia Hub is SOC 2 compliant. We're also building other security features right now, like um, on-disk package encryption, as well as software composition analysis. Um, so you have security and CVE tools moving forward. All right, so to talk about you know, the theme of today, uh, what does collaboration features really mean? Um, so well, the, basically the features we built are meant for teams to be able to work together on Julia Hub. Um, we have permissions so that one team doesn't necessarily have access to the resources of another team. So as I do the demo, you'll kind of see exactly how this works. Um, basically, you know, you add a team to a project and only the users that are part of that team have permission to access and use the resources within the project. Uh, so basically a project, you know, there to encapsulate a bunch of resources. Um, so in Julia Hub itself, you create a project, you name it, 
you add your team members, and then you add your resources. So you'll add your top level directories, and then you can upload uh, files into those directories. You can create folders and subfolders, um, and you'll see a bit of that today. Once you launch the project, uh, it'll launch in an application and in the demo today, you're gonna see it in the Julia IDE. Um, and I think the most important thing to emphasize about the project is that the content in the project persists across Julia Hub. So let's say you, you know, build some folders, you put some content, some artifacts in there, maybe some packages and data sets, your team works on them. And maybe you don't come, um, maybe you sort of are done with your project and you come back six months later, that project structure and all the files, all the content are just gonna be there just like they you know, were when you left. Um, and you can launch them in any app. So if you wanna you know, launch them in the Julia ID today, six months later, you want that project to work in an interactive notebook, it'll persist and, and you know, all the changes that your team members made will stay there. So to briefly sort of talk about team access controls, um, for our first release of this, basically uh, we pull in your teams and groups from your identity provider. So if your organization has, has you know, an LDAP, we will populate your groups in Julia Hub based on that. Um, and then once we have those groups in Julia Hub itself, users of that group can then be assigned to a particular project. Now, if you're a small company or your startup, you don't have, you know, teams or groups in your identity provider. Um, in Julia Hub, you can add people to a project sort of one user at a time. We don't have the ability to create your own custom groups in Julia Hub itself yet. Um, they, that will be coming in the future. Uh, but for now, you can just sort of manually add, you know, a user one at a time to any given project. All right, so let's uh, do a little setup. Uh, I'm gonna do a little storytelling for the demo today. Um, so in this demo story, I've got two colleagues, Penelope and Morris, um, and they wanna know what is the uh, meat consumption look like in the US? So how much meat do Americans consume? So to help my colleagues, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up a project and then you're gonna see how you know using the project um, I'm essentially sharing this content to my team members. So again, uh, for the little storytelling, Penelope has gone out. She's collected information on chicken consumption and pork consumption in the U.S. The data she has found has been starting in 1990 up until 2022. Um, she's put this information together in CSVs, one for chicken and another for pork. Um, and then within the project itself, we're gonna create a structure where we have three folders. Um, we're gonna have a chicken folder, a folder for pork information. And then you're gonna see in the demo, I'm gonna combine the data and sort of put it in a final analysis folder. Um, and so with that, let's just uh, get into the demo and here we go. All right, so I hope you can all see my screen. Um, great, so the first thing we wanna do once we're logged into Julia Hub is go to the Compute tab and click on Projects. I'm gonna create a shared project so that my team can access the resources in this project. I'll call the project meat analysis and give it a description. The Default app for this project is going to be the Julia IDE. On the next screen, I'm gonna add my team members. Let's go ahead and add Morris, and then we'll add Penelope. We'll make sure they're both editors, and then for all the general users, we'll just make them viewers. Now I'm gonna add a top-level resource uh, called Main Analysis, and now I can basically create my project. All right, um, so now let's hit this connect button and this is actually gonna launch the project in the Julia IDE. It'll take about 30 seconds. So while that's spinning up, let me go back to the project view and we're gonna make sure that we instantiate this project so that it actively has get started. All right, great. 
Now, let's go back to the IDE. And here we have our project loaded up. So to keep things organized, I'm going to create a folder called chicken and then drag in Penelope's chicken.csv file with the information about chicken consumption. You're going to see it has values uh, about the average kilograms per capita of consumption starting in 1990. Now I'm going to create a folder for pork and, of course, drag in the CSV for the pork information. Again, the value column is the number of kilograms per capita for pork consumption in the U.S. All right, so next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up a few Julia packages that are going to help me transform this data. All of this uh, will be in the slide deck we send out to you later, so you'll have access to everything I'm showing you here after the demo. All right, so now that I've loaded up all the packages I'm going to use, I want to go back and I want to commit these folder changes that I've made to the project back to my local workspace. So hit commit and now back in the Julia Hub UI, if I refresh the page, you'll see those changes here. You can even browse the folders and see, you know, see the chicken data right in there. Um, and then notice that when I change the workspace to the global one, my changes aren't committed there yet. I'll show you how to do that a bit later in the demo. For now, let's come back to the workspace in the REPL, and I'm going to paste a command that lets me read the CSV file called US Chicken, and it signs it to a data frame that I am calling USC. Uh, that will load, and you will see the data in a minute. So again, you'll see the values and everything here. Next, I'm going to assign the date column to X and start creating a plot. Then Y is the value column. So I have you know, those numbers here. Next, let's just double check that I'm using the plots package and then we'll plot X and Y. And in a few seconds, we'll have the plot that shows us the growth and consumption of chicken from 1990 up until now. So let's close these tabs, make this a little bigger. Um, so notice that there's been substantial growth from 1990 up to 2020. Um, you know, it really goes over 45 kilograms up to 50. Now, Let's do pork. So here I'm going to create a data frame called USP and I'm going to plot it with x equals USP dot date and y equals USP dot value and then again we'll plot it x and y And now, if we expand this, we see a, a very different you know, graph. Uh, pork consumption has been more up and down and some kind of crash right here, I guess, around 2011. If I go back to the chicken, we see it's you know, grown um, to over 50 kg over 30 years, but pork has crashed um, here and then gone back up to about 24 kilograms. Now, when I show this data to Penelope, she said to me, well, you know, the consumption of pork hasn't changed as much, but it does look dramatic if you just show it to me on one graph. Um, so, you know, what Penelope now wants me to do is actually combine both pork and chicken and, and plot them together. So to do that, I'm actually going to first make my data a bit easier to work with by renaming the value column in the USC data frame to value C for chicken. I'm then going to do the same thing for pork and rename the value column there to value P. All right. Now very quick, um, I'm just gonna make it so that we can add this value P column from the pork data frame to the chicken data frame like this. Um, and if I type in USC, 
you'll see the value C for chicken and value P from pork in the same data frame. Now the data frames themselves only exist within this session, so what I really want is to save this data frame as a new file so that Penelope has access to it uh, with combined information. One way to do that is to write a new CSV from this data frame here and name it combo. And you'll see that it's now appeared. Uh, when I click on it, you can see both the value C for chicken as well as the value for pork. Now let me load up this CSV in the REPL as a data frame itself called combo. And I'm noticing that the subject still says chicken. Let me replace that and change it to the word combo since this is combined data. Okay, now we have our data frame with both chicken and pork information combined. Last, let's help Penelope by plotting this with x equals combo.date, y equals combo.valueC, chicken, and then we'll do y2 equals combo value p for pork. And for my final command, I'm going to create a plot. Uh, it's going to plot x as well as y1 and y2. And I'm going to give this final plot a title called meat consumption in the US. And let's also give it the uh, labels. So We'll label it chicken for y1 and pork for y2. And now uh, when we hit enter, we've got what Penelope asked for, which is a much better graphical representation of both you know, the growth and changes in chicken and pork consumption in the US. You can see chicken has gone up and you can just get a better sense of the um, changes overall. So we have our final graph. Now, the last thing to do is put this data in a folder, not chicken. Uh, so we'll create a new folder called final and drag our combo data frame, combo CSV into there and uh, write a message for our final commit. Final information and then hit commit. Now let's go back to Julia Hub. I'm going to refresh and you'll see that my final data with the combo information is there. Um, there we go. And notice uh, that it's actually not in the global workspace yet. Um, so coming back to my workspace, let's publish. And then I'm going to publish these changes to the rest of the team. And now back in the global, we have all the folders and files, and that's it. All right, so thanks for watching the demo. Um, I'm going to move us back to the slide deck, and then I will talk through a little bit of what we just saw. Um, so let me share my screen again. Okay. All right, so basically, um, you know, I helped Penelope analyze and combine the data. Um, and now what I'm gonna do is I, we're gonna move this data into the global workspace. As you saw, we committed it there. Um, and then my buddy Morris is going to be able to take a look and he's gonna say, thank you. You know, I'll take the analysis from here and write the final report. Um, so, Morris has access to all the content that I just showed you, um, especially, you know, the, the combo CSV file. Um, and that's basically our projects feature. So, uh, you know, base, you're making changes in kind of your local workspace, your local branch, you commit those, and then you can publish them to the global workspace. Uh, at the same time, if Penelope or Morris want to make changes in their own branch, they can do that as well. And again, they'll just publish their changes when they're ready back to the global workspace where the whole team has access to the files and folders there. All right, um, before we kind of end and I take questions, I wanted to mention uh, another feature that sort of goes along with projects. 
So we have this traceability dashboard. Um, this basically tracks every artifact and event that's happening throughout the project. So let's say you start with some data over the course of time, that data changes, maybe you add data, you update the files. Um, and as this artifact grows, then we can show you by date, user, specific event, and of course resource, uh, what has changed. So in our dashboard, you can actually filter by date, you can filter by user, um, and we'll give you the full lineage of a particular file or artifact. So this is a huge benefit for any team that wants to really communicate any of this information to, let's say, their compliance office. Um, and you can also you know, download all of this data uh, in a, a CSV format. We also, of course, have log files, um, but I think the dashboard just makes it much easier to follow along for users that are not used to looking at logs all day. Um, and of course, you will get this deck, but I did want to leave you with some of the actual code snippets that I flew through in the demo. So just to use this as an opportunity to summarize, um, the first thing I did was I loaded up all the packages that I needed to use. Then we grabbed the CSV files and we created data frames inside our session. Uh, after that, we plotted both data frames for chicken and for pork. So you saw those graphs. Um, and then what I did next was essentially I transformed my data frame so I could combine the data all in one place. To do that, I first renamed the values column in chicken to value C and the values column in pork to value P. Um, I reloaded all the data as a, as a new data frame um, so that I could add this column to the USC data frame. Uh, then I created a new CSV file so that we could save this information in one place. Next, we loaded up the new CSV file, the combo CSV file, as a data frame in itself. Um, and then really to plot, you know, my final plot, uh, what I did is I assigned values to X as well as Y1 and Y2. Um, and then I actually created the plot and added a title which was the meat consumption in the US and then the labels, chicken and pork. Um, and that is basically the command for you know, creating my final plot. So here is the uh, code snippets. We'll make sure that we include links to the actual data that I used. You can get this off Kaggle um, and you can try this at home. All right, so to wrap up, um, let's talk again about the features you saw today. So you saw our new feature called Projects, which helps you manage your resources. Um, you saw the ability to sort of create folders and files and commit them uh, and have that structure persist across your team. Then you saw the actual access controls giving you know, individual team members different permissions. Um, and I showed you the traceability dashboard. Uh, and really, again, this feature release that um, we're doing is all about team collaboration on Julia Hub. So now you can code together, work on data together, and actually keep all your projects consistent across time. Um, and what's really cool is you can actually archive a project. You can then go back to it at a later date, and you can reproduce the results. So we have a reproducibility feature in Julia Hub itself. Uh, it doesn't have a UI yet, and that's why I didn't show it during this demo. Um, but every every job that you've run inside Julia Hub is reproducible uh, for for you know for the length of time that you're you're with us. Um, so that's it for the demo today. Uh, I wanted to thank my beautiful team members for helping me. And uh, lastly, I want to mention that we do have an upcoming webinar. Um, so Julia, the language, you know, just came out with Julia 1.9. Um, that webinar is coming up next week. It's going to talk about all the improvements in Julia 1.9. Uh, and, you know, since I sort of have you here, I do want to mention that the projects features that I just showed you, they're currently only going to come out on our highest enterprise subscription of Julia Hub. Um, but if you want to just use Julia Hub, we do have a free tier. You literally just go to juliahub.com and click on, you know, create an account. Um, it'll take you right to a screen that asks for your login and you're right into Julia Hub and you'll be able to access a lot of the applications um, as well as the 9,000 packages 
So there's a lot there. You can basically go and do it right now. Um, and I guess, uh, you know, I just want to say thank you for joining this webinar. It really was just, you know, to talk about some of these new features. Um, and now I will pause and see if there's any questions. Um, Deep, there's a question that came in. Uh, are the thinking mechanisms using Git? Yeah, yeah. So everything that I showed you in the projects um, where you're committing your changes and then you're publishing them, it's all Git behind the scenes. Um, so if you're familiar with how Git works, uh, you know, you you uh, are kind of in, you're in your own branch um, of a particular project. And then you make changes, you have to explicitly commit those changes. Um, so you saw me doing that in the Julia IDE. And then once they're committed, you then hit the publish button to sync them with the global branch. Um, so, you know, if there are merge conflicts, um, you can actually go into the terminal, you can fix those. Uh, and get behind the scenes basically means we have version control. So you can roll back any changes that a team member has made. Um, and it really makes it easy to sort of keep track of everything that's happening. Okay, thank you. And uh, for the permissions, can I give different people different permissions within the project? Yes. So, you know, not only um, can you basically permission, you know, one team in one project, a different team in another project, inside the project itself, you can actually choose individual users and you can give them specific permission, you know, to specific high top level folders and directories. Um, and, you know, the use case here is if you have a big project and maybe you have a little bit of data or, you know, some a little bit of data or a package that's proprietary, you only want one or two people accessing it. You can put it in its own folder and you can make sure only that one or two people have access to that directory. Um, and this is within a project that is shared with a, a bigger group of people. So that does exist. Okay, thank you. Uh, do we have any other, uh, I don't see any other questions. Um, okay, so uh, thank you Deep and thanks to everyone who joined us today. We will be sending you a follow-up email that will include a link to the recording and uh, you can always reach out to us if you have any additional questions. Thank you and have a great day. Bye. Bye.